Let's see some more equations along the same lines as the formulas that we had. But I want you to be able to take these guys and solve for a particular variable. That's the key thing about this section, is being able to see an equation that has multiple variables and solve for just one of those guys. So if I give you 2x plus 3y equals 6, and I say solve this guy for y, when I say solve for y, that means get y completely by itself. So here's my y right here. I want to get this guy alone. If you are not connected to the y, you need to go bye-bye. How do I do that? Move the, 2x. Move the 2x to the other side, right? So if I subtract 2x, because the 2x is not directly connected to the y, I have 3y equals. Now, some of you may say 6 minus 2x, which is not wrong, but so that you can be prepared for what you're going to see in the next chapter. I want you to write the variable terms first. You put the constants at the end. That's just a standard way for writing things in mathematics. Okay. Now, what do I do? How do I finish getting y completely isolated? By 3. Divide by 3. Do you all agree? Mm -hmm. Now look back at the last problem that we did. We had the perimeter. I said you could divide the whole side by that number, or you could divide you can divide each piece by that. And it will give you the same thing. And the reason I want to do it this way is so that in the next step when I go to simplifying, <coughs> I don't have to separate it and then simplify. It's already separated like this. So y equals what here? Negative 2x over 3 plus 2. OK, now here's what I'm going to say. You said negative 2x over 3, which is great. I'm going to say negative 2 thirds x and then plus 2. And the reason I'm doing that is, again, to prepare us for the next chapter where we have to clearly identify the <coughs> coefficient of x because of what we need to do with that later. All right. So is y completely by itself? Yeah. Is everything here simplified? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can't, I mean, 2 is 2. You can't break down 2 thirds anymore, so you're done. Okay. Uh, let's do another one of these. 5x minus y equals 10. I want you to solve this guy for y. What step would you take to get y by itself? Subtract 5x. Now, some of you are already doing this. I'm just trying to move this guy to the other side. When he goes to the other side, what does he become? Negative it becomes a negative 5x, right? If you want to say minus 5x, minus 5x is the same thing, I'm not going to do that. How do I finish getting y by itself? Divide by negative 1, right? We don't divide by the variable, do we? No, not when we're trying to solve for it. So y equals what? Positive 5x minus 10 y is completely by itself, and what this allows us to do in the next chapter, this will allow us to, given any value of x, I can just plug it in here and instantly get the y value. I wouldn't have to solve for y every time. So if I said x is 0, if I plugged in 0 here, what do you get for y? 0. Oh, I mean no. negative 10. Negative 10. If I plug in 1, what do you get? 5 times 1 negative minus 10 is negative 5. Plug in 2, what do you get? See how easy that is? You're not having to solve an equation every single time. You can just plug in numbers all day long without having to solve now. You're just doing the arithmetic. Okay. Let's do one more guy. Or girl. I don't know if you guys see these guys as guys or girls. 2x minus 5a is equal to 1 third the quantity x minus b. I want to solve this guy for x. Now there's something here that I'm sure you guys don't like. What is it? The fraction. But you know what? You can get rid of the fraction. Can't you? Times 3. It's reciprocal. 
multiply times the reciprocal, which is just 3. So I'm going to multiply the right side by 3, or 3 over 1 if it makes you feel better. But what I do on the right side, I must do on the left as well. What do you get on the left side of the equation? 6x <coughs> 6x minus 15a equals. Now what's going to happen here? The 3 and the 1 third will reduce to give you a 1. And that, that's it, right? So what do we have? x minus b. You can see that as a 1 that you have to distribute. But if you distribute a 1, does that really matter? It's just x minus b. Right? Had this numerator been a 2, the threes would have reduced, but you still would have had a two to distribute. Okay. Now I need to get x by itself. So what do I do there? That's. The, I'm sorry. That's because it would have been two times x then two times negative b. Right. If that had been a two here, but as it is, it's a one. So I'm distributing a one. It's just x minus b. So I need to get x by itself. That means everybody that has an x, <coughs> you get them on one side. If you don't have an x, you go to the other side. So what does that look like here? I'm going to subtract x. Well, what else can I do here at the same time? Move the 15a to the other side. So I have 5x equals what? 15a minus b. I'm going to say 15a minus b. Could you also say negative b plus 15a? You could. A lot of times you'll see the variable terms written in alphabetical order. And then how do I finish this problem? Divide, by five. Divide everything by 5. And then simplify. So we have x equals what? Negative 3a. Whoop. It's a positive 3a. Three three. Oh. Minus, how would I rather write, how would I prefer to write the <coughs> this guy right here? Well, one -fifth. I'm going to say one-fifth b. You could say b over 5. Again, I'm going to write it so I can clearly see the coefficient so that later on if I need to combine this with other like terms, or if I need to do something else, it's a lot easier when I have that coefficient clearly written there. 